Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be going over setting up a button and door system. So in this you can press a button which will open a door and in this example as well I'm also going to be going over how to open a door in another part of the level and have the camera show what which door has been opening. Because both of these are separate requests I've got so I thought I might as well put them together because you can either use this system as one because it does go quite well together or you can split them up and use them separately as well if you wanted to. So both of these mechanics are used quite commonly in different games. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So if I go over, you can see we have a button on the wall here. If I press E, we're going to open this door, which we're now looking through a different camera to watch the door open. And if we were to go over here, this is where the door has actually opened. And if I were to hit play, you can see that this door is closed over there. And then if I press E on this button to open it, the door is going to open looking through a different camera. And we can go see that that door has actually opened. And in this as well, what we can do is we can have multiple buttons and multiple doors in the level, and each button will work for a corresponding door, which you can set up as well. So this is very easy to build upon and grow to whatever size you want. So if you have 10 different doors in your level with 10 different buttons, it will all work perfectly for how you want. So this is what we make today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a blueprint interface so we can nice and easily and efficiently interact with different items, i.e. the door and the button. So to do this, we're gonna right click, go to blueprints, here it is, and get a blueprint interface. And I'm just gonna name this one interact interface, like so. Opening this up straight away. In here, all we're gonna do is name this function interact, as that's what I want to do with this function. And I'm gonna add an input onto here as well, naming this player or interactor or anything like that, changing this to a character object reference. Because what we want to do is, we can compile and save that, is when we interact with this interact interface, it's gonna fire off this function, which will do whatever code we want, which we can set up in the different blueprints. And we're also going to input the current player interacting with this object. And we're doing that so we can then change the camera views between this current player and only that player. So that's all we need to do in here. So we can close that like so. Then we're going to create our door blueprint. So I'm gonna right click, go to blueprint class, create an actor, and we're gonna name this one door BP, or name it door BP1 opening that up straight away as well. And all I'm gonna do is just a basic cube and camera in here for my door. So you can also use an actual door static mesh, which you have if you want, but for me, I'm just gonna use a cube like so. What I'm also gonna do is open up my reference one, which I made previously, just so I can get the correct dimensions for it like so, because again, I've made this specifically for something in my level. So I'm just gonna right click, copy on the scale, and then paste that into here. So I'm using six on the X, 0.5 on the Y, and 8.1 on the Z. Again, obviously customize this to be whatever you want. Then I'm gonna deselect that, add a component and adding in a camera. And this is so that we can then look at this door opening up through a different camera perspective when we are doing it. So we're gonna be using this camera in the level. And again, I'm gonna be using my reference to find out where I want this camera to be placed by just copying the location and rotation. So if I go in here, I can paste that and I'll do the same with the rotation. And I will also show you how I found this location rotation the first time. If I compile and save that, I'll also close the reference. What I did was I'm gonna place in my door in the level. So again, I've kept this here just for reference of where I want it to be. So I'm gonna copy that, place this in, paste that there, and then rotate it. And what I did was, it was the other way around. You can see in the bottom right of my screen, I have this camera view here. That is the view that the camera is going to see in this blueprint so when we look through the camera we'll see this so what i did was i had that there opened this up just a little bit smaller like that so i can still see it and then i just moved it like so oh, sorry i dragged in the wrong one i dragged in the reference there when i meant to drag in just the actual new door which i made so if i had to do that now this should work for us so again if we were to just move this camera you'll see it's moving in the bottom right there so that is just how i find the correct position i want it to be in so I'd recommend doing that for you as well. And so again, I've also placed in my door in the level like so. So we'll compile and save that. And that's all we need to do to set up the door. We've given it a static mesh and a camera. What we're also gonna do is add a variable here, naming this door value. And this is going to be an integer. And we're gonna make sure this is instance editable. And this is the first part of how we're going to actually set up assigning a door and a button. So we're gonna have a door value and a button value and if they are the same value, they are going to be linked. So that button will open this door. So I hope that makes sense. Again, we'll get into that later on. Then we're going to go to the event graph, delete these three nodes, and I'm going to set up the code for actually opening the door. 
So I'm going to right click, add a custom event, naming this open door. And out of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a timeline. Now, if you have an actual animation you have made for your door, you can obviously just do play animation, but I'm just going to create a basic one here. So I'm going to name this timeline open door T for timeline with it going into play like so. Then I'm going to double click to open this up, setting the length to three seconds because I want it to take three seconds to fully open. Obviously set that to be whatever you want. And I'm going to add a float track naming this open track. On here, I'm going to right click, add key to curve float with a time of zero and a value also of zero. Right click again, add key time of three, so the maximum length you have and a value of one. So it's going from zero to one over the complete length of our timeline. Compile, save, and close the timeline. Now you can see we have this track here. Drag out of the track and get a lerp vector because we want to lerp between the values of A and B using this alpha track here going from zero to one. And the A and B are, are vectors because it's a location because I want to move the door. Now if you were just rotating the door, you'd probably just want to use a normal float and just get the rotation on the Z. I do have other videos going over that but I want to move the whole door as you saw in the video introduction. So what I'm gonna do is go from A, which for me is just gonna be zero, 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 so this position here, and then I want to move all the way down. So again, what I'm gonna do is just use the reference here. So if I had to move it all the way down, I can see when it's in that position, that's gonna be fully opened for me. So that is going to be minus 820 on the Z, or I can just copy that there. So compile, save, go back to the event graph and just put that into B. So for me, it was minus 820 on the Z. Again, do it for whatever it is for you. Then we actually want to move the door. So I'm gonna drag in cube, drag out and set relative location like so. Make sure it is set relative, not set world. New location is gonna be return value there. And that is now going to open our door perfectly for how we want. But we also gotta remember that we are going to be changing the camera to be looking through this door, which we'll do in another blueprint. But once the door has finished opening, we do want to make sure we set the camera back to the player. So what I'm going to do is hold down D, left click to get a delay, connect that into finished of the timeline. So it's going to fire off after the timeline has finished, so the door has fully opened. And I'm going to set the duration to one. So one second after the door has opened, we're going to go back to the player. So we're going to right click, get player controller, like so, drag out of that and set view target with blend. Connect that into the delay. Now the blend time, I'm going to leave a zero, so it just instantly snaps between the two camera views. However, you can, of course, change this to be one, for example, and that means it will take one second going between where the player is to where the door is, or I suppose in this example, where the door is to where the player is. But again, I just want it to snap, so I'm going to leave it at zero. And the new view target wants to be the player. So we're just going to drag that into the custom event to add pin to node, and I'm just going to name this player, which is again what we did in the function we made in the interface, which we'll integrate in a moment and we're gonna pass that through into this function so we know which one it is. I'm gonna compile, save, and that is all we need to do here for opening the door like so. So we're gonna have the animation and then change the camera back to the player once we've finished it. So I'm gonna close this like so. Now we want to set up the button. So again, I'm gonna right click, add a blueprint class, add an actor, naming this button BP, or one for me, opening this up. And again, I'm also gonna open up my reference so again, I can keep the correct sizing which I had. So button pp ref there. Now don't worry that I'm getting errors in there, that's just because I deleted the interface to show you how to create it in this video. So I can delete this code, compile, that fixes that. So again, I've got a cube and a box collision. So in our button bp, I'm going to add a cube, giving it the same dimensions I had before, which again, you can obviously customize to get it perfect for you, or again, obviously use an actual static mesh. This is why I have just 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and then also add a box collision. And this can be how big you want. It just means when the player is inside this box collision, they're going to be able to interact with this button. So again, the way I found out how big I wanted to be was to just place it in a level and see. So if I were to get the location of this and delete it, place in my actual button, put it back, we can see that the box collision is this size. So the player needs to be within this location in order to interact with the button. And I think that's gonna be good for me. That looks good enough. So I'm gonna reopen the button BP here. We're gonna to go to the event graph, delete these three nodes and start doing the actual code for interacting with it. So this is where we're gonna be using the interact interface. So we're gonna to go to class settings, add an interface, adding the interact blueprint interface, which we just created earlier. And you can see over on the right, we have interfaces interact. That's the name of the function. So I'm gonna right click implement function so we can do the code on here. And now again, you can see we have this player 
because that's the player which is interacting with the button, so the one we want to be changing cameras for. And so before we do the rest of this code actually, what we also need to do is add a variable, naming this button value. And again, like we did the door, this is going to be an integer with it being instance editable, compile and save. So again, we can now compare the button value to the door value to make sure they are the same. And to compare these, what we're gonna do is come out of event interact and get all actors of class, like so. And the actor class is going to be our door BP. So we're going to be looking at all of the doors we currently have in the level. Out actors is going to go into a for each loop with break, connecting the execution into there. So it's going to go through all of the different doors we have in the level until we find the one we want to interact with. So to find out what we want to interact with, we're going to get the array element, get the door value integer, which we made before, drag out of this and get an equal equal integer, with the bottom integer being our button value. So if the door value is equal to the button value, they are linked, we want to make sure that we are interacting and opening this door. So to check this, we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, with that being the condition, and the execution going to loop body. False, we're not going to do anything, so then we're just going to go back through the loop to check again to see if the next door in the array is the one we want to interact with. Off of true, we're going to interact. So we're going to come out of array element and get open door, like so, which is going to fire off the code we made before, which again is going to actually obviously open the door and then afterwards change the camera back. And the player is the input we put on that custom event. So that is going to be the player from the event interact here. So that's how we're gonna be linking those like so. Then what we're also gonna do is right click, get player character, and the return value is going to be again, set view target with blend like we did earlier. Sorry, I didn't mean to get player character. I meant to get player controller like so, with the return value being set view target with blend. And the new view target is going to be the array element out of the for each loop like so. So we're going to be setting it to the current door. So again, what we're doing is getting all of the doors, seeing which one is linked to this button. So the one we want to actually open, then we're opening it. And we're also going to set our camera view to be that door. So we're going to be looking through it again, as I showed you at the start of the video. So let's compile, save and close that like so. And now the final step is just to actually be able to interact with this button. So we're gonna do that in our character blueprints. So for me, that's content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. Very simply in here, I'm just gonna do some nice interaction code. So I'm gonna right click, get an E keyboard event, or you can obviously create an action mapping as well if you wanted to. And underneath this, I'm gonna right click, get overlapping actors, with the class filter just being actor. So we're gonna see which actors we are currently standing on top of or overlapping, i.e. our button. And out of overlapping actors, we're going to get a for each loop with break, like we did in the button code earlier. And out of the array element, we're going to get a does implement interface, with the interface being our interact interface. Because obviously we only want to try and interact with an object we are overlapping if it currently has the interact interface, otherwise we won't be able to interact with it, so there's no point trying. So we then we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, with that being the condition, and the execution going to the, into the loop body, False, again, doing nothing. True is going to then interact with that element. So the array element is going to go into an interact message like so. So that is then going to fire off that interact event and function, which is obviously going to do whatever code it is for the object we're trying to interact with. In our case, the button, which will open the door and change the player's view and all that good stuff. Now, this is where we're going to actually input the player. So again, this is the player which is interacting with it, which is gonna work for all of the other stuff we've just set up, again, mainly for changing the player's camera. So all we're gonna do is just get a reference to self, because it's in the character blueprint, this is the character trying to interact with it, so it's going to be this one here. Then drag out of interact, and that is gonna go into the break of the for each loop, like so. Which reminds me, I'm not sure if we did that in the button, so I'll go open it up in a second. But again, what we're gonna do is just stop the loop, because we found what we want to interact with, so we're going to interact with it. So we'll compile, save, and that is our interaction code completely set up to interact with the button, which will interact with the door, which will do everything we want. So we'll close this, and again, I'm just gonna double check my button, like so, I don't think we did, no we didn't. So I'm just gonna drag out a set view target with a blend, taking that into the break of the for each loop again, like so. So it's gonna stop looking for the other doors because we found the door we want to interact with, there isn't gonna be another one, so we don't need to bother looking. Compile, save, close this, and again, I've already dragged in my door and button, but once we've dragged them in, what we want to do is set the button and door value. 
Now by default they're both going to be 0, which is going to work because they're the same. But let's say this button it has a value of 5. I want to make sure that this door also has a value of 5 because again those are now linked together. They have the same value so they're linked perfectly. So if I were to hit play I can show you that this should be working. So if we go over to the button, press E, it's changed our camera view and it's opened the door perfectly like so and a second later we've now gone back to this camera view and this door has opened. So this works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video, so we've done everything we want to do. We've set it up so we can interact with a button which will open a door somewhere else in the level showing us a camera view of that as well. And again, or you don't even have to do the camera view, you can just have it as a button which does something else, for example, opening a door. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.